These vintage figures are worth tons of cash now, but their origins are surprisingly dark. For certain generations, unsure of the age of your figurine then you can simply turn it upside down to locate its maker stamp many Hummel price guides reference the makers mark chart which lists the time period each stamp was employed in the original stamp for instance was present from 1935 to 1949 while the current mark has been in use since the turn of the Millennium in January 2020 meanwhile a mint Hummel nativity set with a TMK 3 makers mark sold for nearly one thousand five hundred dollars on eBay the date stamp corresponds with figurines produced between 1957 and 1963 making the 16 piece collection a particularly vintage example a month later a nativity scene with more signs of wear and tear and no identified date stamp still sold for 850 bucks 
While the market for Hummel figurines first exploded in the 1970s, a collector's organization was established to help fans keep up to date with new releases. While initially US-centric, the group turned international in the late 1980s when it rebranded as the M.I. Hummel Club. And it continues to operate with members receiving club benefits, including regular publications and exclusive figures. Moreover, not every Hummel collector acquires the figurines to display in their own home. Donald Stevens, who served as the mayor of Rosemont, Illinois for more than half a century, gave his own set to the village in the mid-1980s. And in 2011, the Donald E. Stevens Museum of Hummels opened its doors to showcase what's apparently the planet's biggest set of the iconic items. Hummels' mom and dad nurtured the youngster's blossoming skills and permitted her to enroll in Munich's prestigious Academy of Applied Arts. At the time, a girl attending art college was still seen as out of the ordinary, but Hummel's teachers spotted much potential in her talents. She would go on to produce hundreds of pieces of art in Munich, many of which have survived to the present day. So in August 1931, Hummel formally entered the congregation as a novice and received her new religious name, Maria Innocentia. She would go on to use her artistic skill in a variety of ways for the convent, including teaching at a nearby school, drawing sacred pictures, and designing textiles and altarpieces. However, none of these tasks gave her much chance to improve her own abilities. In order to nurture her artistic skills then, Hummel devoted her free time to creating images of kids. These works subsequently caught the attention of her fellow sisters, who coaxed Hummel to post them to a German company that focused on religious artworks. Before long, her paintings began appearing in postcards, and in 1934, her work was even compiled into a book. In addition to halting Goebbels' production line, the Nazis also quickly took issue with Hummel's original artwork. Nazi magazine S.A. Mann's authors wrote in a 1937 issue, There is no place in the ranks of German artists for the likes of her. No, the beloved fatherland cannot remain calm when Germany's youth are portrayed as brainless sissies. However, the party permitted Hummel to carry on painting, albeit with a blanket ban on any sales of her art within the country. Moreover, the situation was about to become much worse for Hummel and her fellow sisters. In 1940, the Nazis closed down all religious schools in Germany and seized the congregation's convent, forcing its inhabitants out. Just 40 of the 250 sisters were permitted to stay, but they did so without any source of heating. Although Hummel briefly went back home in this period, she soon reappeared at the convent, despite the terrible living conditions she had to endure. Furthermore, the Nazis also laid claim to 50% of the income brought in by Hummel's art. The remainder acted as the sisters' sole source of income, which left them with relatively little to secure food and even less hope of battling the severe cold. These events badly affected Hummel and would eventually come to define the rest of her life. It was during this time, though, that Hummel created some of the most memorable works of her career. Her interpretations of the Way of the Cross... These depict Jesus Christ's crucifixion, with each of the 14 images in the series portraying a different event that happened on that day. The spring 2017 issue of the Hummel Collectors Club magazine described the work as a great achievement, revealing in its emotion and intensity, and the artist's magnum opus. In 1944, Hummel contracted tuberculosis, and her health consequently nosedived. As a result, she undertook a couple of stays in a sanitarium in southern Germany before coming back to the convent almost half a year later. And she did so just before French troops took the region, which finally freed the sisters from Nazi control. Tragically, however, Hummel failed to recuperate from the disease. She passed away on November 6, 1946, some two years after her initial diagnosis. At just 37 years of age, it's a heartbreaking story and one that paints a darker side to her now iconic figurines, which the artist only reluctantly agreed to have produced in the first place. You see, the figurines were beginning to find favor with U.S. troops based in West Germany. The soldiers would frequently purchase Hummel's pieces and then send them to friends and family in America as keepsakes. Goebel quickly capitalized on this development and began selling the figurines through army-based exchange stores, sparking another increase in demand. With the figurines now hot-ticket items, Goebel strove to ensure Hummel's legacy wouldn't be tarnished. He teamed up with a series of gifted artists and remained in contact with a group of sisters from Hummel's convent. 
All this was done to maintain the levels of quality that the artist would have expected from Goebel. Over the next few decades, Hummel's figurines' popularity never really waned. In fact, as travel between Europe and the U.S. became more common, these statuettes found a home in the souvenir market, largely thanks to their links to folklore. And by the 1970s, collectors had latched onto the figurines as a valuable commodity, sending their prices into the stratosphere. Currently, production of Hummel figurines is managed by Burnt Forged, who stepped in following the previous manufacturer's bankruptcy in 2017. Forged has since concentrated on direct trading of the statuettes, along with emphasizing the culture that's built up over the years around the collectibles. And he's also scaled back production, lowering the number of items made every year by some 35,000. While ownership of Hummel figurines has changed hands over the past few years, the process has remained consistent. Indeed, they're still created at the same site as they were way back in 1935 and members of the convent continue to be involved in their production. Hummel's personal story may have ended in tragedy then, but her legacy continues to be felt by everyone who's ever owned one of her incredible creations. The world is filled with stories going viral every single day, but how many of these sites can you actually follow? We understand that your day should start with positive stories, stories that resonate with you, and so we started JoJo Stories. Our mission is to create meaningful stories that cover everything from animals to anthropology, history to environment and lifestyle. The kind of content you read on our site will be one you'll want to share with your family and friends. We hope you'll join our growing family and be part of our community. Welcome to JoJo Stories, jojostories.com.